Welcome back. You are watching Dallas Mirror on Desi Plaza TV in collaboration with Radio Karishma, and I'm your host Karishma, and we are in conversation with Do Padma Shri Dr. San Singh Virmani. Welcome back, uh, Dr. Virmani. And before we took the break, um, we were talking about how you were working on one certain technology, and that whole project got shelved. And then after a few years, China came up with the same technology, and then they said that we are the number one leaders in that technology. So how did it go with you? I mean, what happened next? Well, I was in Africa when I mm -hmm. learned about that, uh -huh. and I really felt bad that, well, why? You could this, have been the leader I, in that technology. Why did we Absolutely. discontinue this work? But anyway, mm -hmm. and then in 1979, mm -hmm. I was about to come to USA. Mm -hmm for one year, uh, but then my institute in the Philippines, mm -hmm. they made up their mind to revive that work. Okay, okay. And then they uh, they asked me, instead of going to USA, why don't you come here for okay. sabbatical leave mm -hmm. for one year, and we will explore mm -hmm. the, that same technology that mm -hmm. you had uh, started. Mm -hmm. So I immediately decided yeah. to go there, uh -huh. and uh, so th that's how I revived that uh, technology, and uh, I established collaboration with China. Uh -huh. I identified scientists from different countries, mm -hmm. including India, Philippines, Indonesia, mm -hmm. Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, mm -hmm. and took them to China. Mm -hmm and showed them what they had done. Uh -huh. And then I had started that work in in the Philippines at mm -hmm. my institute. And then I also tried to bring them to the Philippines to <laughs> show how we, mm -hmm. we were doing their research. And I was guiding them how they can start the same thing mm -hmm. in their country. Achha. But my objective was to help them mm -hmm. to develop the technology uh -huh. and uh, to help them to help themselves, okay. Rather than I do everything for them and then they mm -hmm. they they follow that. Uh, it was very uh, more convenient and more appropriate for me and for them to seek guidance and then work there in their own country under their own environment, mm -hmm. so that whatever they 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 develop it will be adaptable to their conditions. So uh, how did uh, your uh, developed technology help India? So so it took several years mm -hmm. and there was a lot of uh, also uh, kind of uh, uh, concern. Some scientists in India did not think that it should be, po it will be possible. Mm -hmm. In rice? In rice. Okay. So there was uh, slow progress, uh -huh. but I did not give up, and I had to continuously go there mm -hmm. and uh, show them whatever progress we were making in the Philippines. Mm -hmm. I will share my material with them, mm -hmm. uh, and and that's uh, how gradually started. And uh, th then it took almost about ten to twelve years. Okay of research work and training and collaboration with them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that uh, India for the first time developed the hybrid rice uh, for their own use. Okay. And it was in uh, early 90s. Okay, okay. So since then uh, India has uh, from zero hybrid rice, it has moved to, now this year it was 2.8 million hectares in wow. India. Wow, wow. Mm -hmm. And about uh, 2.2 million outside India. Oh, wow. So total of 5 million hectares uh -huh. is being grown outside China. Uh -huh. uh, China is growing in area of 16 million hectares. So well behind still, and, yes. And uh, countries outside China are way behind still. But they they are making progress slow and steady, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh, considering that uh, there are several uh, uh, aspects that they have to be working uh, mm -hmm. uh, to to make progress faster. But I would say that uh, five million hectares is still mm -hmm. compared to nothing 
yes. before is yes. still something and it is giving about 6 million tons of extra paddy wow which wow. is what uh, about uh, 1.5 billion dollars mm -hmm. worth mm -hmm. yeah and uh, there are several private seed companies are involved in producing mm -hmm. the seed of the hybrids mm -hmm. and selling it to the farmers mm -hmm. every year mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and farmers get about 1.5 to 1 to 1.5 ton extra yield mm -hmm. and that is worth uh, about uh, 250 uh, dollars uh -huh. and they have to get uh, they have to spend about 20 five to thirty dollars mm -hmm. extra on seed mm -hmm. every year so but still it is a profitable job for them mm -hmm. but in the normal rice varieties mm -hmm. which are not hybrid mm -hmm. the advantage is that the farmer can use its mm -hmm. own seed mm -hmm. for growing this own next year's crop but in hybrids, they have to buy the seed every year. If, ah, they, okay. if they use that seed, it will not give them the advantage Correct. that they uh -huh. have for okay. them. So that's that's how the so things have progressed. I mean, uh, it I can I can say easily that it helped the ongoing process of a re green revolution indirectly. Your research and India from uh, you know from struggling uh, to feed I its own population. Now we are the exporter of rice. Yeah, well, that's yeah. because not because of the hybrid rice, because of the others, the the green revolution technology. Yes, that that and the the, the and this technology was a minuscule part of that. Yes, this but is as they sorts, say, yes. uh, every little things adds up. Yes, and yes. that's how the Indian government had actually uh, they have honored you as Padmashri. Yes, and so uh, since uh, uh, this technology from scratch mm -hmm. i was instrumental in helping india to reach 2.8 uh, at that by the time i retired it was about 1.5 mm -hmm. million hectares mm -hmm. but now it's 2.8 million okay. hectares so recognizing my contributions mm -hmm. from scratch mm -hmm. to 1.5 million mm -hmm. hectares i was uh, given this recognition of padma shri award and then since I was working outside as a non-resident Indian mm -hmm. and helping the world, mm -hmm. they also uh, honored me in 2005 through my Pravasi Bharti Award. And uh, sir, now that you have retired, you, you decided to uh, live in Plano, Texas. Um, you are retired, but then you are busy with a lot of other humanitarian work. Would you like to share that with us? Yeah, the reason I came to Plano was because uh, my children uh, had okay. moved. Uh, mm -hmm. for they were in uh, North East India before, uh, North East USA before, uh -huh. but uh, then they moved to Plano because the mm -hmm. weather was good. Good and everything. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in 2004, when I visited my children mm -hmm. here, I liked city of Plano very uh -huh. much. Uh -huh. uh, it's the way it is organized, the way it is the whole setup. So I decided that I would like to move there. And then it so happened then uh, because of my international recognitions uh -huh. and all that, I was given permanent resident uh, uh, without any sponsorship. Okay. And okay. And That's awesome. a special category. Uh -huh. uh, persons of extraordinary ability. Okay. So when I was, I got that green card uh, in 14 months uh, uh -huh. after my application without any sponsorship from uh -huh. children. So uh, everybody in the family said, that why do I have to go and to India and shuttle between here and uh, yeah. India? So I, since I like Plano, so I mm -hmm. said, okay, we'll uh, we'll settle in Plano. So you are involved mm -hmm. in Plano uh, city uh, activities as well. Yeah. Tell us more about that M4. So, so, yeah. so when I came here, so first for first four years, mm -hmm. I was uh, part part time involved in uh, consultancy, uh, providing consultancy to private seed companies uh -huh. Uh, uh -huh. in USA and uh -huh. outside USA. But uh, when I came here, I found that how to keep myself busy when mm -hmm. I have time. I came across this uh, organization was a multicultural outreach roundtable in mm -hmm. Plano. Mm -hmm. uh, so I 
thought I will spend time. The mm -hmm. reason this organization is uh, there in Mayor's office in Plano mm -hmm. is because uh, Plano is a very uh, unique city in uh -huh. USA in the sense that it, in the population of 270,000 people, mm -hmm. there are 66 nationalities. Wow, wow. Uh, I'm sure a lot of Plano residents wouldn't know that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So the objective of this organization is how to bring uh, awareness among different cultures. Of cultural uh, people from different cultural backgrounds mm -hmm, mm -hmm. living in Plano. So, so they organize different events mm -hmm, uh -huh. in the city, like uh, international festival, mm -hmm. Asian festival. Mm -hmm. Uh, they organize National Day of Prayer, mm -hmm. uh, citizenship seminars, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. several activities which bring the people together, together. Uh, from different cultural backgrounds. And then I, when I was in the Philippines, I had joined Rotary Club mm -hmm. in the Philippines in 1987. Uh -huh. And I was familiar with what Roti Club does uh, in the community, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. both local as well as internationally. So when I came moved to the to Plano, I joined also Rotary Club okay. in Frisco. Okay. Okay. And uh, since then, since 2007, I am also a Rotarian in mm -hmm. in Frisco Rotary mm -hmm. Club. And uh, since 1987, I am a Rotarian. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in that club also we have a local uh, uh, community service mm -hmm. uh, uh, affairs. One of the project that we have in, mm -hmm. in uh, our Rotary Club was, there is a organization in Frisco known as Frisco Rotary, uh, sorry, Frisco Family Services. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the objective of this Frisco Family Services is to provide it's a grocery store uh -huh, uh -huh. in Frisco, which provides free grocery to the people who are economically broke mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. whatever reason for several weeks mm -hmm. until they get established themselves. Wow, okay. So in that uh, grocery store, our Rotary Club was uh, sponsoring the rice shelf. Okay. So the rice that was were provided in the shell mm -hmm. was given by the, uh, given by the Rotary Club because by the money that was brought from the Rotary Club. So since I my background was in rice, yes. the idea came to me that why not I mobilize the Indian community in Dallas yes. to provide uh, to sponsor that uh, shelf. Yes. And normally the general feeling is that we from people from India are here to earn some living here and all that but uh, I thought this is a small thing Yes. but it will also give an indication that we also contribute to the community where we live. Where we in live. A, in a yes. small, Usually small we are way. known that we always try yes. and help our own country Yes. from um, here to there yes. basically. Yes. So with that objective I mobilized our people and mm -hmm. for the past uh, four or five years uh -huh. we have been sponsoring that uh, shelf uh -huh. and it's written there that uh, this shelf is Sponsor. uh, sponsored by the Indian community in Dallas. Wow, that's such a so lovely that, thing. That's, uh, the, and they appreciate it very much. Yes. And well, I mean talking to you I think it gives me um, a really a good sense of pride and also I, I feel very inspired at the same time I see it as a message to a lot of senior citizens who come from India and they they are actually forced to settle down with their kids here you know so this is a message for them that when they come here they can actually contribute um, through getting involved in a lot of local organizations and you know be useful to the community and to the worldwide basically. Yeah, actually, the, there are a lot of uh, opportunities in yes. in Plano. Even our homeowner association, mm -hmm. they are encouraging also mm -hmm. people from different uh, backgrounds who mm -hmm. live in the in the community where mm -hmm. we are in the store diamond. Absolutely. And uh, uh, so it is 
individual uh, if you are interested mm -hmm. to get involved mm -hmm. and help there are a lot of opportunities yes. we we can we, we can all have and uh, really uh, be useful to in the community where we live well, with this great message i would like to thank you dr virmani for giving us your precious time and inspiring many of our viewers tonight and um, in parting would you like to give any message well my my message is that uh, no no matter where which background you come from but if you wherever you are you can always uh, think of something how you can contribute yes in your own way and yes. whatever maybe so it is it is not that somebody has to tell you Mm -hmm. what to do and uh, what what it that that thing has to come from inside you mm -hmm. and uh, there are opportunities if we see around yes. that we can always help each yes. other thank you so much it was wonderful talking to you thank but you. this is with this this is karishma signing off for dallas mirror this time bye bye and see you next time